In this problem, we have a wheel that's rotating and it's not slipping, and it's attached to a spring, and we're asked to find what is the um, angle theta um, as a function of time, given an initial velocity of two meters per second. Okay, so the first thing to do is always to draw a free body diagram and outline all of the forces. Um, so that's what we're gonna do. So with our free body diagram, we're just gonna isolate that, that wheel. Um, so we're gonna have this, sorry, circle. And we're gonna have, we're gonna draw in all the forces. So the first force that we have is going to be our um, force due to gravity on that acts at the center of gravity. This is going to be um, Fg. Then we have a normal force at the bottom and this is going to be uh, N. And we also have a spring force or Fs pulling towards the left. Uh, uh, FK, sorry, not FS. Um, and this whole system is going to have a velocity, um, initial velocity V naught to the right. Okay, that's why I drew my force to pointing towards the left because the initial velocity is to the right. And we are asked to find what is this angle theta as a function of time. So theta is defined as um, the angle from the vertical. Okay, um, so I'll draw it in here as well. This here is going to be theta. Okay, so again, as this wheel, uh, this is because this bottom point here, there's no slip. Okay, um, and that's really important um, for later assumptions. Okay, so now that we have this, uh, and then we also can draw in the omega because it's rotating. Um, so initially, it's going to have a term omega rotating. Um, clockwise. Okay, so the first thing to do is um, to either do a sum of forces or sum of moments depending on what we're trying to find. Okay, so in this case we're looking at theta, the angle of rotation, so that's why we're taking a sum of moments. Okay, um, but it could be any way, any other. Um, for If it was displacement, we'd have to take the sum of forces in the x or y direction. Um, but for specifically for this problem, I'm going to solve it in a different way, um, not with the sum of moments, okay? Just to show another method for solving these kinds of problems. So um, this would be the free body diagram method, um, but we can also solve it in terms of uh, work energy, okay? So if we find the kinetic and the potential energy as functions of theta in the system, and we take the derivative of these with respect to time, um, this energy cannot change. Okay, so the total energy cannot change. So the total derivative of the energy with respect to time has to be constant, okay? Um, or it has to be equal to zero because the, der the, the derivative uh, equals to zero when something is constant. Um, and so um, that's why we will, um, and with that, we can determine the equation and find the same equation, um, the differential equation, and then solve for theta, okay? So we can still solve it um, with the method taking the sum of moments, um, but in this case, we will use energy um, to find that same equation. So first, let's find uh, the kinetic energy. So T at any given point is going to be equal to uh, 1 half Ig, um, omega squared plus one half mv squared. Okay, and this v here is going to be uh, vg, so the velocity at the center of gravity. So this is um, vg. Okay, um, so this is about g. Okay, if I had taken i about um, this point here with no translation only rotation, then I would only have a rotational term, and this term would come into finding Ig and then using parallel axis to bring it over here. Okay, um, so you'd still get the same answer even if you take um, I about another point, but again, that point would have a different translational velocity. Um, so, uh, 
we can um, solve for omega. So we're looking, we're looking to find everything in terms of theta, and omega is a function of theta. It's just the derivative of theta with respect to time. Um, but there's a velocity term here, which we, we need to get rid of because that is not in terms of uh, omega or theta yet. But we know that um, the velocity vg um, is going to be equal to um, omega times r, right? And that's the radius of the circle. Um, so we can just plug that into um, the equation for t, and we get that t is equal to one half ig, um, and we can also solve for ig. Sorry. Um, so ig is equal to uh, one half m r squared. So uh, one half times one half m r squared times omega squared plus one half m omega r. That's the total kinetic energy, okay? And when we plug everything in, um, and sorry, this is omega squared and r squared. Um, when we plug everything in, uh, we get the following. Zero point zero two three four four omega squared. Okay, which is also equal to 0 0.02344 theta dot squared. Then we have the potential energy, which is just stored in the spring because there's no change in height for the center of gravity of the circle. So the potential energy is 1 half kx squared. And uh, this here, um, we know that x is equal to um, r times theta uh, because um, this r here times the rotation theta gives us that translation x. Um, and uh, we can plug that in and get that v is equal to 1 half k r squared theta squared. Okay, and um, if we plug everything in, sorry, let me move this to the side here. Um, we get, if we plug the numbers in, we get that um, V is equal to 0 0.3125 theta squared. So we have both the kinetic and the potential energy in terms of just theta or a theta dot or anything theta. Okay, now we can add these up and get the total energy E. So E is the total energy and it's equal to T plus V. And this is going to be equal to uh, 0 0.02344 omega squared plus 0 0.3125 theta squared. And so instead of omega, I should write theta dot. Okay, now um, we can take the derivative of this and get the following. So, because we know that E is going to have to be equal to constant, right? There's no energy input or output of the system. Um, so E dot has to be equal to zero. Okay, and we know that uh, E dot is equal to um, zero point zero four six eight, seven, theta double dot, theta dot, uh, plus 0 0.625, uh, theta dot, theta. Okay, and this is going to be equal to zero. Now we can pull this theta dot term out of both terms because it's common. Um, and since this theta dot term is not, can never be zero, not always be zero, then the other term must be zero. So E dot is equal to um, theta dot times 0 0.04687 uh, theta double dot plus 0 0.625 theta. This is equal to zero. And um, that means that this whole term 
must equal to zero. Okay, so that is actually our differential equation. Okay, so our differential equation is going to be uh, 0 0.04687 theta double dot plus 0 0.625 theta is equal to zero. And we know that omega n will be equal to um, the square root of 0 0.625 over 0 0.04687, which is equal to um, square root of 40 over 3, if we simplify it. OK. So this is the natural frequency. But we're asked to find the response as a function of time. So we know that these equations have a solution of the following form. Theta of t is equal to uh, a sine omega n t plus b cos omega n t. Okay? And therefore, um, the velocity, so theta dot t is equal to a omega n cos omega n t minus b omega n sine omega n t. Okay, I just took the derivative of this equation here. Um, and to we know omega n because we just solved for it here, but we don't know a and b. And those are solved with the initial conditions, ICs. So the initial conditions are that um, theta of 0 is equal to 0 and uh, theta dot of 0 or actually v of 0 v of 0 is equal to um, 2 meters per second and from this since we said that v um, is equal to omega r we can say that um, theta dot of 0 is equal to v over r. So that says that um, theta dot of 0 is equal to um, v over r, which is equal to 2 meters per second divided by um, 0 0.25 meters. OK. So that is going to be equal to 8 radians per second. So those are our two initial conditions. Okay, so if we plug in 1, and this is uh, 2, if we plug in 1, we get the following. So um, 0 equals 2. Sine of omega t is going to be 0, so a. Sine of 0 is going to be 0, uh, plus v times cos of 0, which is 1. And so this means that v must be equal to 0. Okay? So then um, these terms both cancel because v is always 0. Once we plug in 2, we get the following, that 0 must be equal to um, a times omega n, which is um, root 40 over 3, um, times cos of 0, which is um, going to be equal to um, 1. And i sorry, I forgot to, this is wrong. This should be 8 radians per second. OK? And then minus 0, because we know that this term is already canceled. There's b canceled, 0, so it cancels everything out. OK, so again, this is 8, not 0. And this is the right side of the equation, with t equals to 0, getting this cosine to be 1. OK. So the following yields that a is equal to 8 uh, times root 3 over 40. OK. Um, and so when we uh, plug everything into the above equation here to get theta of time, we can plug in omega n, a, and b. And we get the following. So theta of t is equal to um, 8 
square root of uh, 3 over 40 times sine of square root uh, 40 over 3 times the time. And this is the final answer um, for um, the theta of the function of time.